touched us and um, to cut quite a long story short, uh, welcome, welcome gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Mohammed, do you want to sit up here please? And others must just try and squeeze in where they can. <laughs> um, over the next several years, um, we attempted, through working with the Metropolitan Police, to um, bring Henderson to justice, because he used to travel in and out of the UK. Unfortunately, uh, despite all the work that was put in, and, and particularly the work by the Bahraini uh, community, um, in the end, the Metropolitan Police were unable to to do anything um, for reasons which I won't go into here, but very briefly they felt that there was not sufficient evidence. It is difficult, this concept of command responsibility, to link uh, the leader, um, and, and certainly at that time, the Metropolitan Police and the UK authorities were not as, as perhaps <coughs> as um, committed as we hope they are now to prosecuting perpetrators. But um, in addition to that work, we've put out a number of papers over the years on Bahrain, which are on our website. And then more recently, and I'm now going to hand over to my, my colleague, um, Dr. Lutz Ote, we went to Bahrain and have produced, as a result, this report, which you should have in your folder. There's spare copies down there, uh, which um, we've just had printed, although it's been out um, for, for a little bit longer. So. Um, the idea, before I hand to Lutz, the, the idea of this meeting really sprang from uh, Jawad Farouz, who felt that um, it, was, it would be very useful to try and get, in particular, the NGOs, the human rights NGOs um, who are concerned about Bahrain to, to sit together, because we've all been working separately in, in, to some extent, um, and also to have people who are you, you know, in, in the belly of the beast um, traveling here to tell us what's going on, the latest, and so on. The, the, the main thrust um, is to try and focus around the 13 leaders who have been um, imprisoned and, and tortured and to see how we can um, perhaps uh, do something about, about that as, as an NGO um, group. So <coughs> without further ado, let me ask Lutz to say a few words. Yes, thank you, Kevin. Um, just want to talk briefly about uh, the report that uh, Kevin uh, mentioned, uh, which we uh, published uh, recently. Now we also have uh, hard copies just in time. The, the basic idea of the report was that um, following the mission we uh, did to uh, Bahrain last year, uh, together with the ISET, where we documented uh, a number of cases, we wanted to, to look at uh, the want to look at the implementation uh, of the, the BICI recommendations uh, in more detail. Uh, and the result is uh, this report, which of course also benefits from a number of discussions we had, uh, particularly with uh, Bahaini uh, lawyers, uh, human rights activists, but we also met a number of officials uh, while we were there. So the, the main findings uh, were, and obviously they've been reflected in a number of, of other uh, reports, recent reports as well, is that there are still uh, serious concerns about ongoing uh, violations, that uh, torture has now become more displaced in the sense that it's not necessarily committed in, in custody itself, but we found evidence that it has been, uh, there have uh, been allegations of torture outside the custodial context, and of course, ongoing concerns about uh, excessive use of force, if not uh, deliberate ill-treatment uh, in the course of uh, demonstrations. So the, the findings are that uh, the, the uh, BICI um, recommendations have not resulted in adequate implementation because they, haven't, they have not been a, a, a clear follow-up procedure built into that process. Uh, and there are still serious uh, concerns about the, if you like, the seriousness of the process as such, even though some uh, progress has been made. 
And what we've identified as uh, the core of the problem is that there is a legacy of torture where certain patterns repeat themselves uh, at moment of crisis. Uh, and our, uh, our, uh, the thrust of our report is that unless these recurring patterns are actually addressed thoroughly, there won't be any, any uh, fundamental changes and that history will uh, likely repeat itself in Bahrain. So what are the priorities that uh, we've identified? We have a long list of, of recommendations. I won't read them out to you now, but it's priorities, I would say, is to, to end uh, ongoing violations. And obviously what we are talking about today is an ongoing violation as a result of uh, uh, arbitrary detention, use of torture, uh, unfair trials. So that is clearly a priority. Then to make sure that uh, in, uh, in the course of policing demonstrations and so on, the international standards will be respected. But this is just sort of, if you like, the immediate concern. Of course, from our perspective, what is also uh, critical is that there will be proper uh, reparation and justice for victims of torture and other ill treatment. And here, I think there has been a very narrow focus on compensation at the expense uh, of other forms of, uh, of reparation, particularly uh, a full acknowledgement and accountability of the perpetrators. There have been some cases of prosecutions, but overall, I think impunity is, is uh, still the rule. What is for the, for the future, of course, the most important is that uh, there will be uh, far-reaching legislative and institutional reforms and we've seen some legislative reforms and I think that is to be welcome but it's always easy to change some of the laws at least. The question is of course how uh, well is it going to be implemented and here I think the, the various institutions raise a number of concerns when it comes to uh, the uh, police, prosecution, forensic medicine, judiciary, I think here, uh, and we've detailed all the concerns, I think they're all well known to you, but I think that is the, the crux, is that these institutions need to be reformed thoroughly. But one of, I think one of the, the issues also, we as, uh, as lawyers, and I'm talking a lot about redress, but also others who take a sort of legal approach to, to human rights, I think where, where we also should be mindful of uh, the political overall dynamics because the Bikie report and these processes they focus on very specific uh, things to be done but what we also found is that there is a lack of confidence and trust in the system overall and I think it's it's almost schizophrenic to divorce reform process of big implementation where you have lots of things that need to be done. You have all the international experts and everyone looks at this, that and the other. But you don't have the overall political process to go with it. Where civil society is heavily restricted, where you cannot undertake uh, uh, training activities, for example. You know, I heard that the, the prosecution service now received training on the Istanbul Protocol. That is very well. But if civil society cannot do that itself, cannot sort of have even a workshop on the, on the Istanbul Protocol, then you really have to wonder uh, whether there is an appreciation of the Istanbul Protocol as such or whether it's a very selective way of, of undertaking reforms. And I think that is, is critical. And obviously today we're also talking about the role of civil society, of, of those who've uh, spoken out on rights and who have suffered consequences. But there is, of course, a much beyond even civil society, a much bigger issue of the political participation uh, and equality in uh, Bahrain. And I think that is what we consider to be the key in, in making the implementation a, a successful one in the long run that breaks the cycle that we've identified there. And we also have a number of recommendations for um, international actors, particularly the uh, uh, um, Bahrain's allies, and that's also something we, we, need, to, we need to discuss. Uh, of course, I will also draw your attention to uh, the latest FCO report. Some of you may have seen 
the entry on Bahrain, there is a case study on that, but that also doesn't necessarily reflect what we would see as the priority. So I think for, for all the coverage of Bahrain, uh, it is still very important to, to be very clear and focused on what the, the I think for, for us also a challenge today is um, how do we make sure that, that these cases are looked at with a fresh